In recent years, we have heard of a group of people telling us that we can become millionaires easily within a few days without working hard. He used to live in Colombia and he was struggling so much financially. In one month, he made $91,000. We also have other group telling us that the secret to become successful is to work, work and work hard. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your f***ing ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Most of us are smart enough to know that get-rich-quick offers are scams, but many of us still fall for the trap of hard work. Unfortunately, people don't become successful just by working hard. Okay, let me explain what I mean with a story. The day was Thursday, 27th April, 1986. The 11 year old Ezra woke up to prepare for school, but there won't be school for him today, his father announced. Ezra was angry. Avi, the Jewish boy said, meaning father, today's Thursday. You should be on your way to work too. Yes, I know, his father answered. I took permission from work because of you. There's something important I have to tell you. We can talk on Sabbath, Ezra protested, still wanting to go to school. It's about Bar Mitzvah. Ezra's father announced. Now, Ezra was willing to listen. Since he was a boy, Ezra had been hearing about Bar Mitzvah. He knew that for him to become a respected member of the, the Telkar village, he had to compete and win a prize for his Bar Mitzvah celebration. Bar Mitzvah is the Jewish initiation ceremony for boys when they reach the age of 13. Every Jewish community celebrates Bar Mitzvah, but none do it like the Jewish community in the village of Tilkar a northwestern village in Argentina. Unlike in most other Jewish communities, in Telkar village, being a bar mitzvah isn't just about coming of age at 13. It's about proving yourself to be worthy of the responsibility of adult life. There is a crown to be worn and a contest to participate in, and for Ezra to know how important such a contest is, his father had stopped him from going to school this Thursday, as it's a custom with parents in Tilkar village. In about 18 months, Ezra's dad started, 74 of you would contest for 12 Yarmukhez, Ezra's dad announced. Yarmukhez is the traditional skull cap within Jewish community, and everybody, including children, has many of them. So Ezra asked, why do I need to contest for a Yarmukhe, pointing to his wardrobe filled with them? Every Yarmukhe you've ever used was made in this village or brought from the Rosario city, Tobias said. The 12 Yarmukhes that 74 of you will contest for next year will be made by the chief rabbi of the whole Jewish religion. From Israel? Ezra excitedly asked. Yes, Tobias answered. By the way, Tobias is the name of Ezra's father. According to the custom of the Jews, in the Yuyo province, parents are not allowed to give any clue to their children about how to win the Bar Mitzvah contest. If truly they will be qualified adults, they're expected to figure out how to win in the contest on their own. Today is the 30th of April. It's a Sunday, and for Jewish kids, it's just another day. While Christian kids at Telkar village were in the church, Jewish kids either engaged in intellectual arguments or play soccer. However, today is different for Ezra and his friends, Asher, Noah, and Jacob. Their father had revealed to them the contest ahead of them in the next 18 months, but nobody had told them how to win. My dad told me that the 12 Yarmukhes would be hidden in 12 houses, Noah said. But how do you know which house a Yarmukhe is? Asha asked confusingly. And even if you know the houses the Yarmukhes are hidden in, how do you know where in the house they are hidden? Jacob asked even more confused. I think it's going to be a game of hard work. Maybe we should start practicing how to run, so we could reach as many houses as fast as possible, Ezra said. What if it is a pure game of luck? Asha asked. What if those who get the Yalamakes are just lucky to enter the right house and search the right place, he added. After three hours of deliberations, the four friends couldn't agree on a strategy. Ezra and Jacob were open to the idea of training hard to prepare their bodies for running and searching. Asha believed that such contests as they were preparing for could only be won by luck. Noah doesn't have a preferred strategy yet. As for him, there has to be a better way than hard work or luck. Today is 13th November 1986. It has been six months since all the 11 and 12 year old boys in Yoyo province started preparing for the most important day of their young lives. Some have started a training regimen while others pray more than ever before, 
but Noah is yet to adopt any of the two strategies. Instead, he spent the last six months speaking with adults in Telkar village. Yes, these adults were not allowed by custom of the village to give him specific clues, but they were not prohibited from telling the stories of how they won or lost at the Yarmulke's contest. At first, Noah decided to speak with any adult he could find, but after three months, he discovered that the stories he was being told were too random. His next strategy was to look for and speak only with the people who won a Yarmulke when they were 13. Maybe this group can have something in common, something they all knew or did something a 13-year-old can reliably adopt as a strategy. Then came another problem. It's more difficult to find adults who won a Yarmulke at 13 because it's often a contest within 23 villages of Yuyu province. But Noah was convinced he could find the secret from their story, so he spent two hours every evening and all of Sunday looking for and meeting with adults who had won a Yarmulke at 13. The first person he met was Zachary a 34-year-old school teacher in Ayura village. Then he met Caleb, Levi, Jude and Ethan. Regardless of who he talked to, the three simple questions Noah wanted their stories to answer were What kind of house was a Yarmulke found in? What color was it? And where in the house was it found? He wasn't allowed to ask these questions directly, but since the village custom permits the adults to tell their stories, Noah could get the answers he needed just by listening to their stories. After speaking with 27 past winners of the Yalamake contest, Noah discovered that answers to two of his questions are different from one person to another. But one of the answers does seem to give a clue. Yes, nothing in particular unique about a house that Yalamake could be hidden in, and the color of the Yalamake seemed to be different from one person to another according to the past winners' stories. But there seems to be one thing reoccurring in these people's stories. Yalmukes were either found hidden at the bottom of the candle stand or in the kitchen. Even though Noah still has the task of running within many houses out of the 329 houses in Tilkar village, knowing where to search is a big relief, and now he could start practicing how to run. It's 1st October 1987. Today is the day. The biggest day of the year and all the 13-year-olds from the 23 villages in Yoyo province had gathered. There were 74 in all and were to compete for 12 special Yarmukis. The 12 here represents the 12 tribe of Israel. And to win one means to be respected for strength all your life. Rabbi Joshua gave a short speech and set the young boys on their quest. It was, as usual, a serious contest. Boys who had trained for speed in the last 18 months ran very fast within houses and scattered homes furiously. But most of the time, they either entered a house without a yarmulke or they searched the wrong places. Noah also had to run, since there were more than 300 houses he potentially had to search for. Because he only trained for 12 months, Noah couldn't run as fast as the other boys. But he spent less time searching a house since he had an idea of where a yarmulke could be hidden. Five hours into this ultimate search, only three yarmulkes had been found. Thirty of the boys had either sustained an injury from running or were too tired to continue the contest. Noah too didn't have it easy. Even though he knew where a yarmulke could be hidden, he had searched 36 houses without success. And just when he started having self-doubt about his strategy, he found a Yalmuke in the 37th house. Two and a half hours later, the contest was over. While Noah wasn't the first person to find a Yalmuke, he got an award for searching most houses in the history of the contest. As per his friends, Asher, whose strategy was to pray for luck, sustained an injury after 35 minutes of the contest. Ezra, who had trained hard for running, got tired after 4 hours and 17 minutes of the contest. And Jacob, who also trained hard, got the 13th Yalmuke, which in fact isn't a Yalmuke at all, but a cap designed for a boy who had tried so hard but couldn't find a Yalmuke. Ezra, Jacob, Asher and Noah in the above story represent adults in our world. The Yalmuke is the success, prosperity and wealth we all desire. The contest and search in the story is the uncertain road that leads to the success we want. Many of us, like Ezra and Jacob, believe that the secret to success is to work really, really hard. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your f***ing ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Some of us, like Asha, believe in luck or soft work. 
but we all know deep within ourselves that hard work alone couldn't possibly be the secret to success. If hard work was the secret to success, then most people in the world will be successful. A lot of people work hard and they're still broke. In fact, a lot of the time, the broker you are, the harder you probably work. Yeah, my grandmother worked 10 times harder than me. People who succeed in our world, however, are like Noah. Noah in my story did work hard, but he didn't succeed because he worked harder than his friends, Ezra and Jacob. Instead, Noah succeeded because he learned how to work hard. Working hard by itself won't make you rich. You have to learn how to work hard and what to work hard on. For example, it doesn't matter how hard you work. If you're a brick layer or truck driver, there's a limit to how much money you can make. It doesn't matter how hard you work as a waiter for McDonald's. There's a limit to how much money you can make. It doesn't matter how hard you work as a self-employed business owner. If your business requires your presence to run it, there's a limit to how much money you can make. Some jobs can't make you rich, no matter how hard you work. A lot of businesses can't make you rich too. Some skills are not that valuable and the customers aren't ready to pay premium for it. So while talking about hard work, the very first thing you have to work hard on is to figure out how to work or the right thing to work on. Study to understand the economy of your country and who that economy is rigged in favor of. For example, capitalist economies are rigged to favor capitalists, while socialist economies are rigged to favor the politicians. Study to understand the industry you're working in or the customers you're serving. Work hard to acquire skills that are valuable in the marketplace. Start a business that's easily scalable. Don't just produce what people need, but what they want to pay for. You get the idea. Learn how to work hard and what to work hard on, even before you start working hard. That's what Noah in my story did.